at the end of the day, I think what we learned most is that you got to be customer centric. Yeah. Uh, we had good mobility, uh, being a clean bank in the economic downturn, we were able to help customers uh, that really needed help. Welcome to the Dime Podcast. I am Neil Smith. And on here in the podcast, what we want to do is simplify your business. I'm so excited about today's conversation. We're with Grant Schmilk, the Chief Revenue Officer at Dime. And we're talking about banking. Uh, now, this is a selfish conversation for me, one I've been excited to have for a long time. Uh, and I'm excited for you to listen in on it. So, Grant, welcome to the podcast. How's it going? So if it's an exciting topic for you, this should be interesting. This is exciting. This is exciting. Well, I, Grant, you've been a hero of mine in the business space for a long time, and, and, and you've had some tremendous success in your career um, and done some really fascinating, interesting things. And banking is one of those that I just don't think we think about banking much, but it's critical to everybody's business. It's critical to everybody's life and, and what they do. And so I'm, I'm eager to just understand banking and how it works. I personally have gotten into cryptocurrency recently. You know, I have, have had some conversations about that. We're not going to go down that path today. Not today. But Grant, I want to know, let's just, before we get into the questions about banking, when, how old were you or do you remember when you got your first bank account? Man, I, I think I was in my early teens. It was – uh, what are you going to put the lawn mowing business in the bank account yeah. and never had a balance though. Just had the okay. account. Just had the account. And then you probably had checks. Did you have checks that you wrote out of the checking? Absolutely. Account? Absolutely. Balance the checkbook, learn to yeah. do all the check register stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I was about, about the same. I think I was in seventh grade when I, I had my lawn mowing business uh, and baseball card business. I, I yeah. ran baseball card business out of the lockers, uh, out of my locker and had the, the lawn mowing business that actually paid the bills. Uh, and, and I had my checking account, my dad gave it to me and then I got a debit card in high school. And that was, you know, like the coolest thing in the world. Game for me. changer. Uh, game changer. So let's talk about banks. Grant, why does a bank even exist? What's, what's the purpose of a bank? I think it's the, the purpose of the bank for today is for businesses and, and people to be able to control their lives. Unfortunately. Yeah. Well, tell me why, why did the banks even begin in the first place? What, what was the, what's the history of banks? Exchange, sell a product, be able to pay for it. Uh, and so what it's done now is revolutionized, I think overall the ability to do business. Uh, and there's not any businesses that don't have a checking account. So you, you create that ability to in exchange money is the, at the yeah. end of the day, that's what it does. Yeah, so the bank helps you exchange money. Let's uh, let's dig into that a little bit. So the government creates money, right? We need to exchange money because like if I work, I get paid. Uh, if I buy products, I get paid. And then where does the bank fit into that, that flow? That's the intermediary. You know, okay. you have a bank account, I have a bank account, you hit go and I'm able to receive your money or vice versa. Yeah, so they help you receive and give money transactionally beyond because we don't just hold a bunch of cash. Right. So they become that middleman. Where, where do credit cards fit into the banking system and structure? I think they've just created the ability for us to have leverage. Uh, so okay. the credit card world ends up in your checking account at the end of the day. Okay. Um, if I sell you something, uh, you're going to put it on your credit card and that bank that owns that credit card is going to send me the money into my checking account. So okay. whether it's checking account or savings account, it all ends up in my ability to turn around and pay somebody else something. Interesting. The Interesting. exchange. So talk, and, and maybe if I could expand a little bit more, what does leverage mean? You, you said, uh, you use that term leverage. What does is, what is that mean and why is that Credit. important? You know, so if, if you've handled all of your bills appropriately and, and people have underwritten you, you have the ability to get credit. Uh, so more money than you have today. So if you had the ability to, if you had a thousand dollars in your checking account, somebody would underwrite you and maybe you can leverage that to $10,000. Um, okay. I could buy $10,000 worth of goods or services from you and pay that back over time. Yeah. Maybe they're going to take a little off the top and what they call interest. Okay. Uh, so that's how they credit card companies make money fees yep. and interest. 
So, and, and Grant, you, if I understand this right, you started a bank uh, and actually sold a bank. I think yeah. a lot of us just assume the banks just always exist. You don't start in a bank. They're just there. Uh, what's, what, t- tell us that journey, that process. How did you get into banking and what, what was it like to start a bank? Oh, it's a good story. I think yeah. uh, when I got out of college, I, I went to work on the teller line in a, in a super regional bank. Um, and went through a management training program, worked in just about every department from bankruptcy and foreclosure to consumer lending to the branch side of things, customer service. Um, and, and as that progressed over the years, I ended up in the commercial lending side of the bank. I really enjoyed that in commercial real estate. Um, and, you know, in the, I guess it was probably 2005, six a lot of a lot of real heavy lending going on, and the industry started to change as the economy was changing. So uh, they started going to lines of business instead of customer relationships, and we saw an opportunity. Uh, yeah. The worst thing in the world is a bad banker for business owners. Mm-hmm. You don't necessarily need to borrow the money that you're approved for. Uh, so in the downturn, 2007, uh, we started to see a lot of defaults you start to see in the mortgage business uh, turn into a scary situation and so uh, we left and started our own bank got approved by the FDIC Uh, we raised almost 17 million dollars from local shareholders family friends uh, customers and um, went through the process to build a local community bank that was customer centric Uh, so it opened in 2008 wow wow so you started a bank. Uh, what was the journey then of starting the bank to then selling the bank? And what uh, would you learn along the way? Yeah, was, you probably learned a million things. What, yeah, what a million things. Gonna, lots, what, lots, what learned, that, lots of good lessons. Um, yeah. But at the end of the day, I think what we learned most is that you got to be customer centric. Yeah. Uh, we had good mobility. Uh, being a clean bank in the economic downturn, we were able to help customers uh, that really needed help, you know, in that downturn, there was a lot of people that got in bad situations and it wasn't necessarily their fault. They still had good money. They had good credit, but the, the, the system locked up. Yeah. Um, so that created an opportunity for us on our previous relationships and new relationships to actually do business. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you saw the FDIC, you saw the bank regulators, everybody uh, started shutting banks down. And so that created sort of that opportunity for us to step into the market because we were able to still lend money, deliver relationship banking, uh, and it worked out really well. Very cool. Very cool. What a, what a crazy story. I mean, I think about all the things of entrepreneurial adventures and your first big one would starting a bank um, and and the significant seat uh, that, 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 that is in a community and what that means to all of us without, so many of us even realizing how critical that is uh, to our lives. And, and I think in our day, we haven't experienced, you know, and, and obviously we, we experienced the recession, but um, such massive fallout, like, like so many people did where they were hiding money in their mattresses and uh, th- things like that. And so it's uh, right. the bank is such a critical part of, of all of our lives and the trust we put in that uh, is very significant. Let's yeah, talk about yeah. the good and bad uh, of the bank grant. What, what are some of the good things uh, when, when you even look at choosing your bank? Um, what are some of the good things and the bad things that, that exist in the world of banking? Uh, I think, you know, convenience is, is a good thing. Uh, we all have the ability to spend all of our money in our pocket. Uh, so you can go anywhere and, and exchange that currency. Uh, so I think what the bank delivers is the ability for us to be mobile uh, and and to enjoy our lives and to do business wherever we are in the world. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the ability to have cash, um, you know, there's a tremendous ATM network in the, in the U S and, and across the globe. Yeah. Uh, so if you and I landed in Europe, you know, and we were in Italy, we're going to get that currency out of the ATM. And, yep. uh, so it's an efficient way of doing business and it's an efficient way of traveling and it's an efficient way to be able to experience life. Yeah. At the end of the day. 
Uh, yeah. Some of the bad things are you, you're concentrated uh, usually with one bank, um, yeah. and, and it's a competitive business, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, you talked about crypto and all that stuff. I, I don't know where banking is going in the future. Uh, it seems yeah. to be consolidating very quickly. Uh, lots of larger banks are buying the smaller banks up. And uh, I don't know that that's a good thing. I think relationships matter. I think um, as a small business owner, you really need a banking relationship, someone that can, you can trust, uh, that understands your story, uh, that you can call on, that can help you capitalize on opportunities. Not only do they need to understand your business, but they need to know your story. You know, if, if you were getting into an acquisition mode, you know, you can't go to a banker, in my opinion, and say, okay, I'm ready to buy another company and not know them. I think you need to get way ahead of that and say, okay, I'm looking to be in the acquisition mode over the next couple of years. I'd like to get to know you. I'd like for you to get to know me and let's work together because they become a business partner. If you have a good banker, yeah. um, they are in essence a, an investor in your company. And a lot of times they're the largest investor you have. Yeah. Um, so if you tell the, tell a good story and they understand your business, you're more likely to have uh, success in the acquisition mode or if you're buying a building or whatever it may be. Interesting. Interesting. So let's talk about, let's think about like for a small business owner or a church leader, you know, and, and whatever organization they are, if they need to go pick their bank and maybe they have a bank and maybe they're frustrated for a certain number of reasons, or they've never even thought about it, but they think maybe I need to go find a new bank. What, what are you looking for and what should they be looking for? And what should that process be in choosing the bank or banks um, right. that, that they should be working with? So I think usually it begins with the, the convenient side of it. Uh, you know, in the, in the church space, it's, you know, Sunday's got to be put in the bank, the deposits, yeah. the cash, it's got to go somewhere to yep. create that ability to exchange and pay your bills. Um, but I'm a big fan of relationships in the banking business. You know, you yeah. can be at a super regional bank, um, and have a relationship or you can be at the mega banks, but you've got to know who you're dealing with because when you need something, you got to have a person. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're, if, if you're in church space, you don't just walk in and say, Hey Susie, so good to see you. I'd like to build a building. Can I get a $4 million loan? That just doesn't happen. Yep. Uh, so over the years you want to say, okay, we're a church and uh, we've been banking with you for two years. You know, we, we, have all of our deposits with you. We have our line of credit with you. Uh, our church members bank here. Sometimes the employees of the bank go to the church. Um, and that's what I call a relationship, you know, that, and that ability to be able to explain your needs for them to understand your needs and to help you have a roadmap uh, to accomplish your goals. You know, so if you started, two years in advance building that relationship, you're going to learn from that banker that says, well, the, you know, $4 million loan, you need 20, 25% down. So over the next two years, your church congregation should come together and maybe do a capital campaign. Yep. Um, and that ability to have the knowledge to reach the goal uh, is very important. Yeah. Boy, this is, and this is so good. It, it goes back to conversation I had with Ben around it, you, is your accountant. You should have a relationship with your accountant. A lot of people just want to be transactional uh, in some of these relationships, business relationships. But by having those go-to relationships with your accountant, with your uh, bank, that, that goes a long way. How do you know, Grant, that you're not getting ripped off? I, I think for people like me that aren't, don't live in that world. I think we're, we're pessimistic that like bankers are going to sell us, you know, lines of credit that we're going to be paying on in ridiculous amounts in the future. Cause we don't know they're throwing numbers out that don't make sense to us. How do you know that you're really getting a good deal or, or getting, you know, getting into a good healthy loan when, when you start going into those lines? Of credit? Well, we, all, we always said the worst thing in the world is a, as a bad banker. Uh, yeah. Cause a lot of times in the, industry uh, it's a competitive industry yeah uh, the, a lot of bankers uh, feel like if they give you the money then that's the relationship in my opinion you don't always 
need debt. Uh, so just because you're offered a big line of credit doesn't mean you need to spend it all. Yep. Uh, so I, I think uh, it's almost like a, a gut feeling. Uh, yep. You know, you can tell when the rates are too high. I think you also need to shop around. Um, you know, a lot of people get comfortable, you know, talk about the insurance industry. If you don't ever check your insurance rates, you know, over the years, they're probably going up and there's probably better rates out there. So it's, uh, it's something that you want to do the, the gut check on, uh, in the, in the local industry. And then, you know, the internet obviously has yeah. blown that ability to shop rates and stuff out of the water. So yeah. yeah. be aware of it. Um, but I, in my opinion, as a small business owner, having a credit is more important than what you're paying for it. You know, it sometimes a, a rainy day comes and you don't have that liquidity available. Yep. Um, you know, if, if you have to pay a little bit of a higher interest rate to make it through to the other side, I think that's okay. That's the cost of doing business. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. What, uh, and you, and you hinted at this a little bit earlier of the future banking and nobody really knows what, what the future of banking really looks like, but I, I'm curious with your unique expertise, what would you predict in the next 10 years in the world of banking? Where, where do you see a lot of this stuff going? I see a lot of consolidation. Um, I see a lot of transparency. Um, and you see it from the payment processing business, credit yeah. card business, the crypto world that's coming. Uh, you know, in, in 10 years, I have no idea that uh, what it's going to look like. I don't know that anyone does. Jamie Dimon's probably trying to figure that out at Chase. <laughs> uh, but I see like a, a lot of larger banks continuing to take over more and more of the space. Uh, yeah. But at the end of the day, that doesn't develop relationships. So I think the space for small business owners and churches is still going to be local. Um, and I think the, the local community bank will always have its place because that um, local knowledge and relationship is really what, how banks make decisions. Yes. So you can be a, a credit app online and, and probably get what you need. But if you're a small business owner, that doesn't necessarily explain your business. Uh, so they don't understand cyclicality, seasonal lines of credit. You know, you can't explain those sort of things unless you have a relationship. Yes. Grant, I, this conversation has, has transformed my thinking. And I, I use Chase because of convenience, because of the right. ATM network. Uh, it's down the street from me. Uh, I don't know anybody at Chase. Uh, I just go there because I feel like I can access it easily. It, it makes me think that uh, as I look to the future, that the, the function of banks is probably going to change and is changing. Um, and I will probably be moving towards a more localized bank. The value of that out of this conversation uh, speaks so much to me and where I see so much money going. But I, I don't know this world, but I feel like I've learned a ton in this conversation. Grant, thanks for speaking into and sharing your wisdom around banking. Any other thoughts or for leaders um, of organizations that when it comes to banking and, and what they should be prioritizing? Yeah, I think um, don't start your banking relationship when you have your biggest need. Mm. Um, be proactive um, in building that relationship. You know, break bread with your banker. Uh, have them in. Let them meet your employees. Uh, let them understand your business because uh, it's not necessarily, uh, I, I would say it's not easy when you're in need to get money. Yes. Uh, you need to have that ability beforehand. So whether you're doing an acquisition uh, or you need a line of credit uh, because you're in a cash flow crunch, uh, don't take the negative situation and try to build a relationship with the bank. I would say start today. Uh, understand who they are, understand their needs, let them help you shape your business to be a customer of their bank. Um, and that, that helps everybody. So he can tell your story or she can tell your story better um, if it's not crisis mode. So yeah. I would say start, start uh, your banking relationship today, but don't do it when you're in the biggest need or crisis mode. 
boy, that is such good advice. We, we had that, we had the same conversation with Matt about legal. Don't wait till you have a legal issue to call your, call a lawyer, have a relationship with your lawyer in advance. Same conversation with the bank. You need to get your relationships in line. Uh, I want, as we close out this podcast, I want to encourage everyone listening, go to simpledime.com. Uh, check out how we can simplify your business. We're here to help. Let's start a conversation. Hit that get started button. Let's have a conversation. If you've listened to this podcast and you enjoy it, would you share it with a friend and leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever it is that you're listening? Thanks so much for listening. <laughs>